In this video, I'm going to be going through uh, Keras embeddings and categorical variables. So for the data set, what I've chosen is this survey that was done in Indonesia uh, that essentially looked at what type of contraception that you're using. So they looked at a few variables like um, age, education, uh, the H over here means husband's education, the number of children, uh, whether you're religious or not, in this case, whether you're Muslim, uh, Islamic, I suppose, um, whether you're employed, and so on, right? And um, so over here, you have some of the some of the variables that we just looked at. So you just go, uh, it's a pandas uh, data frame, right? So you just looked at the head of it. And uh, the, the good thing is that none of the variables are missing. So, so this is a really good data set to play around with. Um, so just quickly, just going through some of the variables, the education, uh, it's there's four categories, right? So um, it's one, two, three, four. I, I do think that uh, four means like you'll probably have a graduate degree or some some sort of that. Whereas three is bachelor's, two is high school educator, and one is uh, you didn't complete high school, right? So, um, but at the same time, I, in in this case, I'm actually going to take education as a categorical uh, variable. So basically, I am saying that one is. Two is not better than one, three is not better than one. And the reason why I'm doing that is that this kind of implies that if I if I put the number two over here, that two is twice as good as one. Okay, so twice as good as not having. So having completed um, your high school is going to be twice as good as not having completed. And that's not necessarily true, right? So especially going from two to three, that, that doesn't mean you're one and a half times better just because you're, you completed a degree. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to be taking them as categorical variables. Um, okay, and finally, just looking at the, the histogram, the contraceptive variable, so it's one, two, and three. Um, so you, there is, I suppose, a slight imbalance here, but we're, we're going to ignore that. So this is what we're trying to predict. So given, given these variables, um, age, education, and so, so forth, can you try and predict the, the, the method of a, a contraceptive that they're using? So, so that's that's a question over here. Okay, and I've defined this uh, this function called one hot encoding. Basically, what it does is it takes a categorical variable and and puts zeros. Uh, it it's basically makes it into a vector of zeros and ones. So basically, if I in the education category, there's there's four, right? Uh, so let's say the so one person had category three. So what it's going to do is it's going to change it into zero zero one zero. Okay, so if, you, if it was a uh, category 4 of education, this will become a 0 and this will become a 1, okay, and so forth. So it'll do the same for the other categories as well. It'll, it'll count the, uh, so it'll, it'll look at uh, the maximum number of categories. So, so uh, some categories, there's only three categorical variables. In that case, uh, this will, there will be no, this will be gone, okay, all right. Okay, so let's uh, let's look into the problem. Um, usual uh, usual thing to do is um, uh, you need to scale these things. I can't quite remember if I had done this in this uh, particular problem. Um, oh yes, I okay yes. So I did. So I did take the scalar and I redid age and number of children so that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Okay, so again um, I. I read so age rather than becoming a proper number this time will become a decimal point number as soon as I do this step. So let me this I've already run this. I'll just show you df dot head. Okay, so you can see age is like you, it goes negative and, and so on. Okay, and then the reason is because I, I standardized it, and that's something you should really do with any uh, machine learning problem, not just deep learning. Okay. So um, I've already run most of these things before, so that's why you won't see me running these things. Um, but uh, what, I've, what, what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken two categorical variables. So cat over here is categories. Uh, so the living standard, okay? So I've taken the maximum number of living standard to be, hey, that's the number of categories that I have. And it's the same over here for education. And then I've gone ahead and done a one-hot encoding of those, those things. Right, so um, simply put zeros and ones for those those things up there, and then um, so in scikit-learn, we had this train test split function, and this is really useful because what it does is you can you can put keep putting your x's 
and whatever else your wires and whatever else that you need so that it will split them uh, split them according to how much how much training and testing you want in this case I want 10% to be testing I set the random state to be one so just so that I can recover this um, this order of, of uh, things that I've got but if you look over here the um, the output that you get you get train X test X and then the second thing is uh, living standards one hot encoded I get training living testing living and so on and then the finally I get training Y as tested, tested Y okay so you can put as many variables in here as as you want okay um, right so let's let's get to the part where it gets a bit more interesting where we start looking at the model Okay, so in this case, um, because I, I've done a one-hot encoding of these things, uh, let's see, over here, okay, so th th this, what I've done over here is really important. So I've taken just the bare train X, so in train X over here uh, was only, uh, let's see, it was, it was only four variables, age, number of children, whether they're employed or not, which is just a zero or a one. Whether there was media exposure, which again is only a zero one, whether there was media exposure or not, and I've, and then I've concatenated them. Okay, so concatenate them across so that um, the the train education and train living. So I over here is four four variables train education. I'll just show you the sizes. Okay, so think train x dot shape. Yeah, so it's thousand three hundred twenty four. So sorry, I, I've run this script already, um, but over here, th this variable over here was 1325 by four. Train education, let's see, it's train education dot shape was again, okay, so, all right, so I've, I've already run this thing. I'm not gonna run this again, but I'll just tell you uh, that the train education over here was uh, the categorical thing, okay? so. Um, let me just run this step one last time so that you can see train x dot shape. So train x dot shape over here becomes 1325 by 12 and the reason is it concatenates these things. So if I go train edu dot shape now, it's 1325 by 4 and then train living uh, dot shape so again 1325 by 4. Okay so I've concatenated uh, three things of four columns width and and that's why I get the shape to be 12 okay so I have 12 uh, 12 things that I'm doing and so over here you can just do your normal um, just a normal uh, keras model over here which which really isn't uh, too hard where you just go a, a dense layer in this case I've, I set train x dot shape so to be the input dimension output dimension to be 12 as well um, and that's really coincidental. I could have chosen that to be 10 or whatever it is. Um, and then finally, remember we're trying to predict uh, three classes, right? So that's why the output dimension over here is three. Activation has to be a softmax, okay? So it's not a sigmoid anymore because we are there are three classes, and because of that, this has to be softmax. And um, yeah, so you just compile it, set the optimizer to be whatever you want. The loss, this is really important, has to be categorical cross entropy. Whenever you're doing multi-class classification, it has to be credit category cross entry. And I said, oh, I've also said, I want to see the metrics as well, the accuracy. I want to see how how well it does as uh, as as it trains. So let's just zoom out so you can actually see the output. Okay, so it, it starts off at thirty eight percent accuracy, and then improves to a about um, let's see, uh, well, okay, so it improves to about seven uh, fifty seven. As an accuracy, okay. So you can look at the model as summary. So you'll um, you'll see that there's 195 parameters. Okay. So the first layer is a 12 to 12. Now, if you're wondering where, how how did it become 156, uh, the reason is uh, sure there's 12 by 12 weights, which is 144, but then there's biases as well, which you add 12, and then that becomes 156. Okay, so that's where the 156 came from. And similar story over here, how it became 39. Okay, so you can see, uh, so the, these are the, uh, you can get the weights if you, if you really want them. So 12 by 12, 12 biases, and so forth. Okay, so that's, that's enough of that, that variable, uh, that model for now. Let's look at embeddings, which is really what we came here to see. So, um, embeddings, how do, how do I explain this? 
So embeddings is um, let's let's actually concentrate on what happened. Uh, one uh, another way of looking at um, categorical variables. So yes, you can do it and say, hey, uh, this is my uh, one hot encoded thing. So you have four in this case. But when you're multiplying by weights, so let's think of the living conditions, right? Suppose it was only the living conditions that you were concentrating on. Uh, so what I can do is just living conditions, I can multiply by a weight matrix. Okay, so if this is your X, which becomes a one by, so taking one at a time, one by four, and then your weight matrix is gonna be a four by D dimensions, right? So it's, it's like, if I was only using, um, just the living living conditions to predict my let's say those uh, let's not go good go as far as going as three let's let's have a d-dimensional width uh, middle layer okay and then finally this gets connected up into three okay so one two three so for those three classes so there's d dimensions so this connection over here you can think of it as a weight matrix Okay, so forget about the biases for now, but this is your weight matrix, and it's going to be a four by D matrix, all right? So, so when I say zero zero one zero, what it's going to do is it's only going to choose this row. Okay, so it's going to be become a one by D output, and and uh, yeah, so everything that was over there appeared, appears over here. Um, so one way of thinking about this is um, rather than me always saying, okay, I, I'm going to give you this one hot encoded output, I'm going to just, just say, just choose the third column. Okay, so if, if, if my living condition is three, just, just choose the three, third column from this embedding matrix. So rather than W, let's call, this is called the embedding uh, matrix or embedding table, whichever way you, so it's a lookup table, okay? And this exactly the same thing is has had you done a uh, one hot encoding, right? It it literally just chooses whatever you're on. If you if it was zero zero one zero instead, if you zero zero one zero, in that case it would have chosen this one. Okay, so it would have chosen the, the second second thing. And given it given it over here, and that becomes that thing. And that gets multiplied by whatever W2 is. Okay, so W1, or rather the embedding matrix. And then you, you multiply it by, and then you do your usual thing. Okay, so let's let's come back over here. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna call it encoding. So I'm gonna encode that living living conditions uh, by from an embedding thing. Okay, so you have to give it uh, the number of dimensions that you want. So this four over here is D. I didn't choose it to be a big, big number. I, actually, there's no reason why I chose four. I could have chosen three or two or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, so I chose four. The first number here is the number of categories. So I, that's why I saved this number before. Okay, so in this case, it happens to be four. This input length thing, now this, the, the reason you even have to bother with input length in Keras is uh, Keras is expecting a time series. Okay, so because of that, you had to say input length equals one. Okay, and um, unfortunately, you have to do this extra thing called flatten, uh, which is, as in, in my view, it is a bit of a burden, but it's so that you really get rid of this. Um, so you have a four by four by one matrix, you get rid of this one part and just really just end up with a four by four. Okay, so flatten, that's what it does. It gets the same story with um, what was it for the education? So you get you get the uh, number of education categories. The D uh, again, it didn't have to be equal to this. I just set it to be four. I could have chosen five if I wanted it to be. You must set input length to be one, and then you flatten it. Okay, and then you you so I suppose what's strange over here is I got a third thing. So over here, these are like sub uh, neural nets. Okay, so I, I, even with the x, I'm going to be taking that, I'm going to, and I'm going to be output uh, putting that into four. Again, no reason why I should be choosing four. Okay, and then your final neural net. So you take these three, and then you merge it. Okay, so let's let's just go on to my diagram over here. So what I've done 
is I've taken, let's just, let's just suppose I only had uh, living conditions, right? So the living conditions thing, I've taken an embedding matrix for that and, and put it up over here. And then with the train X, so I have four variables, I've put it into four things, okay? And then these two sub neural nets, I merged them into one flat layer, okay? So I end up with, well, in our case, because I also had uh, education, I end up with 12 dimensions over here, okay? So, and this 12 dimensions, so this becomes my final neural net that, I, that I'm going to play around with. Uh, so in, in our case, what, what have I done? Um, so I, I put in another hidden layer with 12 nodes, and the final one is going to be three nodes. The three nodes which you need to uh, do the classification stuff. Okay, so I, hope, I really hope that makes sense. So, so really, the, 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 you need to understand this embedding and the flatten and this merge layer, which gets them all to all into one final neural net and says mode is concatenation, right? Because I could have summed them up if I really wanted to. And then you do a usual dense layer. Okay, so once, once I train this up, uh, my accuracy, does it improve? I think it slightly improves, so no. Uh, yeah, so it's 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 about it's fifty six percent accuracy. Okay, and you sh really shouldn't be surprised because let me let me just show you the model dust summary. Look at the model dust summary. It's one hundred fifty six by thirty nine again. Okay, which is which is um, exactly what I had over here before, one hundred fifty six thirty nine. Okay, because once I got to this this point over here, it's still twelve by three. But one subtlety is that there's Rather than being 195, which is these two added up, there's 247 uh, parameters that it needs to train. And the reason is, uh, so you can't do this anymore. So uh, the reason is the embedding layers, right? So, and which it hasn't really shown. Uh, okay, so over here, this is, what, okay. So when, when I go model or get weights, this is, this is one of the uh, embedding layers. Okay, so it's a four by four. You get you get two of them, and even even for the the train x, uh, sorry, the x, the, the for some strange reason it doesn't show you the the weights of these sub uh, neural nets. Okay, so you you get sixteen uh, or sixteen plus four twenty over here, four by four sixteen, four by four sixteen over here. Okay, so um, so yeah, so I, I suppose let me just I can show you that. So if I go dense x summary which was one of the one of the sub neural nets it'll show you that there was 20 variables whereas over here with the with the embedding ones it's literally just 16 because there's there's no biases with embeddings okay so yeah uh, so that's um, that's pretty much what embeddings are so if you have any questions or comments please let me know but before I go let me just show you one last thing so uh, this is only to show you how embeddings work okay so categorical variables and embeddings are pretty much the same thing. Okay, so the, sorry, the one hot encoded and embeddings, uh, what it what it comes of it is the same thing. Um, the last thing that I did was I looked at just train x. So with train x over here is only uh, those four variables, uh, which was number of children, uh, it, uh, well, the, whether you're religious or not. Anyway, so just just look up look up here in, in my notebook. There's only four variables in here. When I train that on itself, I actually end up getting quite a high accuracy, uh, which I can't see. Oh, so in the test, in the in the test uh, one, I end up getting the accuracy. Okay, so here we go. So the accuracy was seventy percent, and even in the test set, you can see see the accuracy to be seventy percent. So so yeah. So this was I, I suppose a, a case of overfitting, and I want you to try and see uh, if you can using all the variables whether you can beat this accuracy with 70%. I suspect the reason why, why it didn't go so well when I, when I included the rest was one, uh, the main reason is I didn't use any regularization. Okay, so I didn't use dropout, I didn't use uh, L2 regularization or L1. So uh, play around with this notebook uh, and uh, post your code on the, on the uh, comment section. Uh, and that's it for now. Thank you.